Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's GP Strategy session, Designing Safe Instruction, the Use of 3D Animation for Training. I'd like to introduce you to today's presenter, Sherry Weppel. Sherry is a Director of Training and E-Learning Development at GP Strategies. Sherry has over 15 years' experience designing, developing, and delivering interactive computer-based and web-based learning modules. Her role is to drive innovative ISD techniques into processes and provide valuable input on the state of learning and best-in-class practices. Sherry recently completed her MS in Learning Sciences and Technology with a focus in gaming for instruction at Lehigh University. She has also earned an MS in Instructional Design and Development from Lehigh University and a BS in Art Education from Cutsdown University. So with that, Sherry, I will turn the session over to you. Thanks so much, Kayla. So as we're talking today about safety training, we have to think about the individuals who are coming into the workplace now. You know, we have a lot of industries that are going through having an aging workforce. And the individuals who are coming into their organization are much younger. Um, you know, I will say, if you think about the amount of information that's been presented on texting in the car, they, the uh, characteristic of invincible might come to mind is that they just don't think that anything bad could happen to them. Uh, you know, so we have to think about what does that mean for our safety training. If we think about the safety training in the past, what we may have experienced is having somebody stand at the front of the room, talk about safety reminders, and then everybody goes about their day. But if what you're talking to is a group of individuals who feel that they're invincible um, or who don't really get the, the extreme nature of some of the safety concerns that you may have, we might have to rethink what that safety training looks like. Some of the quickest ways to reinvigorate our safety training is obviously the incorporation of media, which a lot of people are doing even without going towards an e-learning module. So one of the really the fork in the road that we come to as we start to think about incorporating media is are we going to use video or are we going to use or 3D animation? It's really a hard decision to make. Uh, you know, deciding whether you're going to use video or 3D animation is something that I think a lot of organizations struggle with and really both, uh, both will suit the needs. However, when we start to think about creating training that's going to last, training that's going to be truly impactful, we may want to go in the right direction towards 3D animation. There's a lot of benefits to 3D animation, which include the fact that it's reusable. Um, so as opposed to recording a video and having that video um, often become dated, with 3D animation, we have the ability to reuse it in a lot of different settings, um, you know, making slight changes and tweaks to it to fit the need. It is customizable, as I was just mentioning, so you have the ability to change up the scenario, change up the situation, or alter details to either protect a situation that might be confidential while still getting across your message. Um, it's also the ability to make that something that's confidential. So if you have a situation that occurred, you obviously can't use video of that situation. Uh, however, you can create a 3D animation that's similar in nature or gets across the same message that you want to ensure that your learners get. 3D animation can also be more interactive than a video can be. You know, a video, a learner really presses play, they listen to it, they watch what's going on on the screen, whereas a 3D animation we can use to create interactive engagement. 3D animation, much like a video, has the ability to show multiple viewpoints as well. So you have the ability, just like if, if you were on a sound stage, to move the camera to different areas of the 3D animation. Um, to capture a different viewpoint, getting the perspective of maybe the pedestrian, maybe the person who's driving a fork truck, um, maybe the, the perspective of the overall organization. 3D animation is also easily translatable. The text can actually reside outside of the 3D animation so that if you have the need to translate for your global needs, you have that flexibility as well without having to re-record the video. As we start to look at safe instruction, we, we start to focus on four different areas which spell out safe. So we have the scenario, the activity, the feedback, and the evaluation. As we jump right into the scenario, the scenario is the first thing that we should start to think about from a safety training perspective. If we do safety training and we're just getting down to the details, we're going to miss a lot of the impactful nature of what we can accomplish. To make sure that all of your training is inside of a scenario that's realistic, um, that's something that they can relate to, is going to make that message more impactful and make it more sticky, really, to the learner. So as we start to look at a scenario here, in the example we're going to use in this session, we're looking at um, the safety training around a fork truck. Um, not only driving a fork truck, but walking around an environment in which fork trucks are present. So 
So as I switch to the media, what I'm going to do is I'm going to allow the media to play out, um, and then we're going to talk about it a little bit. All of the clips are very short. So as you can see from this little little clip, in the 3D animation, we can see the fork truck driving. We can see the person who's reading the clipboard and not paying attention. And then, unfortunately, we do see that that person eventually do get hit by the fork truck. This is impactful because we can show the real consequences of our actions. Um, you know, there's a, the difference between giving a learner a message of this could be dangerous to you and really being able to show them the impact. Obviously, this is not something that we could capture with video. Um, because we cannot put a live person in front of and show an accident like that, uh, unless you have some sort of Hollywood stunt person. But we can simulate that with 3D animation and then reuse all of that animation in different ways throughout the module. We also have the ability to, as I said before, reuse and show multiple viewpoints. So if we go to another video clip, you're going to see that a similar scenario, but showing it from the operator's view to show how their view is obstructed. So in that scenario, we were able to see how the, the same type of a scenario can be seen from another perspective because it's important to recognize the fact that safety is not one person's responsibility. Safety is everyone's responsibility. It's the responsibility of the organization, the person driving the fork truck, the people who are walking around the fork truck. And if everybody has their eyes on safety, then we will be able to operate in a safe environment. So some of the scenario best practices include making sure that you're using a realistic scenario, something that's plausible, has rich details, is something that they can relate to. Want to also try and include those multiple viewpoints whenever possible to get across that message that safety is everyone's problem and safety is something that everyone needs to pay attention to. It's important also whenever possible to show multiple impacts. So how does this impact yourself? How does this impact others? How does this impact perhaps the facility that you're operating within? And how does this impact the environment? These are all things to consider when developing the scenario that you base your training on. We're then going to go into an activity, because it's not just something that we want to get across from a shock value perspective or a scenario that they can relate to. We want to make sure that they're engaged in the learning that they're working through. One way in which we can do an a activity is to have an interactive screen. Again, in the interactive screen, what we're able to do is we're able to leverage uh, the 3D animation that we've created to create something that's interactive. So as you can see in that example, we're able to have something that the learner can click on for more information. They can see examples of how this impacts pedestrians, how this impacts the operator, how this impacts the environment. And I think you also saw that there was the ability to show a multiple viewpoint so that you could see it from two perspectives at the same time. Another example of an activity is to give the learner a scenario-based activity. Um, in this scenario, we have the learner acting as the pedestrian that you see on the screen. The red light is flashing, letting them know that there's some sort of hazard that's ahead of them. They, the learner gets to choose whether they click the go button or the stop button based on what's happening in the scenario. So in the e-learning module, what the learner would see is they would eventually, if they waited long enough as they're supposed to, they would see the red light go off. If they press the go button at that point in time, they will be able to cross safely um, through the walkway. If they didn't wait until the red light stopped flashing, and they pressed go while the red light was still flashing, they would actually see themselves get hit by the fork truck again. So again, we're giving them another scenario, and this time we're giving them control over what the, what the pedestrian is doing, helping to put themselves in the shoes of that person before they're presented with some of those same decision points. When we're creating these activities, some of the best practices that we need to consider are making sure that we include details, so specific examples
examples for them to explore, um, giving them a lot of that information and that background knowledge that they're going to need to be able to make decisions in the future. We're also going to, get, going to want to give them some options. So what options can we give them to make, put them in challenging situations? So that would go back to our go and stop example of a scenario allowing them in a safe environment to make choices and see the consequences of their actions. Whenever possible, we want to incorporate alternate viewpoints. So if there's any other viewpoints that we can include from uh, pedestrians to the operator to the people around them to the environment, we want to make sure that we can include a holistic view of the impact of the safety decisions that they're making. Whenever we do have these activities, we want to make sure that we include the feedback as well. So from the scenario perspective, as we looked at the feedback, what we were able to do is we're able to show the consequences of that learner's actions. So if we were to jump to the example again, in this example, they had pressed the go button while the red light was still flashing. And let's see what happens to the pedestrian. So that's another example of how the learner is able to be presented with the consequences of their actions. We also want to make sure that we give them some good examples as well. So what we typically do in a module is we'll follow that up with, had you made the right selection, this is what the consequences of your actions would be, to show them that had they waited, had the red light gone off, and then they pressed go and crossed, they would have been able to cross safely across the walkway. Some of the feedback best practices that we want to make sure that we include are animated feedback whenever possible, showing them the true consequences of their actions. There's a huge difference between telling a learner that, yes, this would have happened, no, this would have happened, and them actually being able to see and experience what that would have been like. We also want to make sure that we're including some positive feedback as well, um, indicating what the right decision was and what the positive consequences would have been. And we want to include some environment feedback as well. So what would have been the impact of the safety of others, the safety of their environment, um, the safety of the organization, and the people around them? The last part of the SAFE methodology is evaluation. Um, evaluation is important to any sort of training solution that we're putting together. And the example that we're going to give you is including two different types of, of evaluation. The first type of evaluation is a game. So we have to go back to the population that we're targeting and the fact that they're newer into the workplace. They may be heavy into gaming or used to learning from that perspective. So this is a great opportunity to take core content that we need them to know. It's content that we're going to give them year after year and giving it to them in a format that they're going to enjoy and learn a little bit more along the way. So from an evaluation perspective, what we can do is we can give them a timing element to it as well. So in this example, what we can do is they're timed. The time is over here on the left-hand side. Um, they have to identify what the different areas are. They can click hints if they need a hint. If they click on the wrong area, you can see that they lose more time. And then you can give them the score at the end. They can then click on each of the different areas to get that information again if they need refreshers on any areas that they got wrong. Now, because safety is such an important topic, we do want to make sure that we're compliant as well. And many of you do have compliant requirements that you need to adhere to. In that case, we also want to include a summative evaluation that's more of still scenario-based. Um, but more of a multiple choice question so that you can get a true picture from an assessment perspective of what the learner was able to complete and what the learner knows. Some of our evaluation best practices include game-based whenever possible, incorporating some, some form of gaming or some sort of challenge into the learning um, so that it's not just a standard assessment that they can remember what the multiple choice questions were and, the, and their corresponding answers year after year. We also want to make sure that we're including some sort of compliance-based assessment as well, making sure that you have the due diligence that you need for your organization, um, and making sure that we're including some realistic feedback. We don't just want to say, yes, this is right, no, this isn't right. We want to make sure that we're including the consequences of their actions. And this concludes our webinar for today. My contact information is on the screen. Uh, if you have any questions or would like to continue the discussion, feel free to contact me there. Thank you very much for joining us. Great. Thank you. Thank you. And then, yeah. I hope that was painless. <laughs> it was painless, actually.